Mr. Kale Campbell, how are you? I'm doing great, Dominic. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. And I, I like the map behind you. You've got, you know, a big chunk of North America there, lots of open ocean. I wonder if we're going to talk at all about being on the ocean today. Yeah, and it, it comes up all, all the time. I, I get calls from people all over like North America. I was just chatting with somebody in Montreal and, and I started talking about the Gas Bay, which is on the east coast of Canada, but yeah. I'm on the west coast, right? You know, it's yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I love to travel. I, you know, I haven't traveled much recently, of course, but um, yeah, whether it's to the west coast, east coast, or down south or, or south. Hawaii, you know, yeah. I'm really happy to get any place near the water. Let's put it that way. Well, let's let's start off with a crazy question because some people may not know this. Kale Campbell, who the heck are you, and why would you be talking to this group of contractors, specifically cabinet makers and architecture mill workers and guys that make beautiful stuff out of wood and manufacturing? Yeah. So, number one is I appreciate uh, what what they do. My my brother is a finishing carpenter. Uh, oh. My other brother is a more of an industrial carpenter work works at a mine site. Mm -hmm. And and my dad used to build log homes and, you know, he built his own home with his own hands. And wow. you know, we, we helped build, you know, peel logs and stuff. I was, I was, I was small, like I was three or four. Um, and we actually don't have a nice set of cabinets installed yet. Uh, and that's, <laughs> that's what happens when you build your own house. I'm sure, uh, you know, you just run of, out of steam at some point. Well, you, you get onto other projects, you know, he, he, he built cedar strip canoes, you know, he's, he's got two, two planes, you know, even though he's, he's, he's actually timed out on his, his medical and stuff. Uh, but yeah. you know, we, we have other hobbies. So if you build your own house, that's a, that's a, that's what happens. One of the, the traps, like as a recruiter, if you work on your own resume, all those things, they're just not quite as good as what you do for other people. And, yeah. and I really appreciate that about my, my friends who have mill workshops uh, or customers, um, you know, they, they really do such amazing work for their clients. And, you know, it's a, it's a changing world, you know, whether or not they're bringing in CNC or um, using, using different things mm -hmm. internally to be more efficient. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, there's just so much changing in that world uh, that I appreciate it. And yeah, I, I love chatting with my friends who have those, those businesses and, yeah, just, just seeing where they're growing. Let's put it that well, way. Well, and, and the growth is actually why I asked you to join us on the show, because we went and found you. We had to drag you out of privacy and quiet and solitude. Uh, here, you're laughing. For those of you who are listening to the audio, Kale's smiling big on the video. But uh, today, we're actually going to talk about the people side of the business, because it's a, it's a drastic problem. It's just a problem, Kale. I can't, I can't dress it up any other way. And, you know, you and I have both been around long enough, maybe you less than me, but I've seen some cycles. It's either we can't get any business at all and it's easy to hire people or we've got so much business. I don't even want to return the phone call, but we can't find people to, to help us build it. And yeah. we're in that phase right now. And, and, it, and it's worse than it's ever been. Uh, yeah. my, my, my team and I were meeting yesterday and they're like, oh, you know, I, I think it's bad. And, you know, I think we should be looking at diversity in women and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that's, that's a common theme, very important. Um, but what's changed? Like, why does this hurt more? And, and I actually found some government stats that apprenticeships, registrations, and actually graduations fell off a cliff last year. Mm. Um, and, and they've yet to recover, like 70% down. So if, if you remember in, in 2020, there was a period of it, at least three months. Nobody was hiring. Nobody's doing anything. Yeah. Nobody was doing anything. So that's, that's three months. It's a quarter of the entry levels. It's also a quarter of the people who are going to move up. Right. Uh, it's a quarter of the people who, who turn over anyways. Right. Cause yeah. in a year, if you got a shop of 20 guys, you're going to lose two to three in a year. Right. Yeah. But you're losing a quarter of those. And that apprentice you were going to hire or that senior guy, he's still going. But that happened for six, seven, eight months. You know, in some uh, some states and some provinces, it just went on and on and on. And you know, well, that is the uncertainty. The uncertainty. Un uncertainty. Like, am I going to switch jobs, or am I, am I going to go back to work? And and I think there's there's like it's always been hard. You know, in 2006, 2007, it was hard to hire. Right when things got really booming in like 14, 15, depending on where you're, where you're where you're working, it was hard to hire. But that punch in the gut that happened, you know, when there was a big crash in 2008, I think it was, 
this one was a lot harder for a lot of people. Uh, and they just didn't hire. And even if you were getting uh, some sort of a government subsidy to keep things going, pay some overhead and pay some salaries, you weren't actually hiring more people. No, you're just keeping the people you've got. You're keeping and the people you got. And if somebody quit, you're like, oh, well, it's you know one less mouth to feed type of thing. Um, but you didn't hire and nobody else hired and the big guys didn't hire. So I, I got a call last week and they're like, you know, a company I've been chasing for probably 10 years, one of the biggest Caterpillar dealers in, mm. in Canada. And yeah, we were, we were supposed to hire 30 a month in 2020. That was on oh. our plans. That was on our plans. Oh. Yeah. And so we cut that and now we're at 2021 and management wants us to hire 60 a month. And I'm, I'm like, from the magic you, box of zero, the managed box of nobody trained during that year. Right. Yeah. Like nobody trained. So that, that, that cliff has been worse. I think I, and I just, I just kind of realized this uh, last uh, yesterday, right. Is that that cliff has been worse than any other kind of interruption in the progression and training of, you know, people and, and, mm -hmm. You know, things really picked up. I think in mid two thousand for a lot of the the the, the cabinetry and 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 woodworking shops because people are like, oh, I'm spending more time in my home. I'm not going on that Christmas vacation this year. I'm not going on that summer vacation down to uh, Disney World and stuff. So I'm not going to the Grand Canyon. I'm going to invest in my home. So you've got this big upswing, but there's there's just that cliff that we won't be able to just just switch off and recover from uh, because people have. So decided to become gamers who knows what they've decided to do yeah well or they've got the government subsidy that's inspiring them i'm gonna say to stay home or not not be as employed yeah so 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 right now everybody's nodding they're listening they're like yeah i got it we're all in the same boat it might be difficult to understand though if you're in the middle of the states nebraska if you're in the middle of canada winnipeg if you're in the middle of australia what's that cooper pd if you're in the middle of, of new zealand it's uh auckland you know wherever you are yeah smack in the middle of that country we all have labor problems right now and i i i asked you to come on the show to talk about how do we how do we take as many steps as we can yeah. to change that because we all we can do is everything we can do we have to have to pull out all the stops so kale you're an expert on recruiting for trades can you guide us through this yeah so jumping back you, you said you know we're all in the same boat yeah and that that's not true at all like okay. when, when we decide to go out fishing or we decide to go on a business voyage, mm -hmm. we're like creating the arc, right? When we're starting our own business, when we're looking at going out fishing, we decide, you know, what boat we're going to buy, or we're going to go out on a charter with a guide. What fish we're going to specialize what in. What fish, but, but really we all choose different boats, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, are we going to build the arc? Do we have this vision of, of, of bringing all these species together? Or in, in the case of some businesses, are we gonna bring all these diverse people together? Are we gonna bring men, women? Are we gonna bring people who speak different languages? And are we gonna build this you know, mill workshop where, yeah, there might be some accents that are a little bit hard to understand, but because of bringing all these people together, we, we build a better product, you know? Uh, and, and how big a, how big a boat are we going to go on? Right. Like, are we going to just maintain, you know, having manual machines and, you know, maybe it replaced an edge bander or, you know, can we bring in a CNC machine that does, you know, full table layouts or, you know, what are we going to do to really expand things? Mm -hmm. So when we, we talk about being in the same boat, some people are choosing to be on a small boat. Some people are, are choosing all the bells and whistles, Yeah. but other people are saying, where, what is our destination? Like, do I want to build, you know, cabinetry in like the White House? Yeah. Like, like what, what's our vision of where we want to go? We'll figure out, we'll build the boat. <laughs> I, just what, so you what, know, those guys are listening to this show. <laughs> the I, boat builders. I, no, the guys who build stuff for the White House. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, like, like that is, and, and if you're not, why isn't that your mission? Like if, like it doesn't Well, and matter. it's just not for some people. For some people, yeah. it's regular kitchens for some people it's stadiums and but for other people it's courthouses it's just yeah, and, it's, and and a regular ki kitchen to me is you know like my wife and, and i and like we we bought a house that's not a mansion mm -hmm. but the kitchen is the center of our house right we've right. got a, a view of a field uh you know we see friends out there playing and that kitchen is, you know it's a beautiful you know it's oak 
oak and you know it's 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 our center right so if if somebody's vision is to build you know kitchens for the richest people or you know whoever they, their core customer is and if, yeah. if there's clarity on who's your core customer and where are we going right so it might be your, that your customers now are you know they're a little bit low budget you know they like you know they're not going to spend as much as they might at a shop at another part of town or in another neighborhood and and that's good that they're core customers but you you might want to kind of move up a zip code you know whatever your vision is and and i think that really attracts people right uh, so saying okay this is where we want to go as a business mm. this is what we want it to look like right so do i need to tell my team that do i do i does my team need to know or do they just good enough to come in punch the clock and i i kept stuff it through in, the planner it, it, I put it, kept it in my head for 15 years, right? You kept I, what I, in your head? Like your that vision, vision of where, where, where we're going, right? Oh, how'd that um, work out for you, Kale? It sounds like there's a story there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's ups and downs. It, it, it's like kind of failure your failure to launch, right? Mm. Unless you like write it down or, or you envision it, right? Like if you're going to build, you know, a, a set of cabinets, like you need a plan. You need to see the layout. Right, you need to put together that plan, and you know if if you're going to have a team build them, you're going to like show it to them, right? So if, if you want to build a business, you need a plan. You need to lay it out, right? That's, you know, yeah. We, when I'm we started as, as kids, you know, we were we got a, a puzzle for Christmas. What's the first thing you do when you're putting together a puzzle? Flip over the lid. Flip over the lid. You look at what your vision is, right? Now, if my sister got the puzzle, the first thing I did, I'll be honest, is I stole a piece. Stole a piece. Because I'm that brother. <laughs> we did we did 52 pickup, right? Yeah. Oh, I hope she's not listening to this. That's, that's okay. But I, you're I, right. I, you're right. That vision has to be there for the business. I, I'm a big fan of the one-page strategic plan. There's two different systems. Uh, do you use a strategic planning process or what's your, yeah. how do you lay it out in your company? Yeah. So we use the entrepreneurial operating system. Oh, right? great. So there's Gino Wickman. Yeah. Gino Wickman. There's, there's a, a bunch of gurus, um, yeah. you know, whether or not you choose uh, scaling up or, um, yeah. you know, I, I think there's green light, uh, yellow light, red light, which actually comes from the bigger companies like Boeing and Ford. Mm -hmm. One of, one of the CEOs had really brought in a system there, but as long as it's a system and one that you can show other people. Yeah. So every quarter uh, we have a, a town hall, and mm. anybody can ask any questions, right? Like no questions are off the table. I might not be able to answer them. Yeah. And I might not want to answer them, but ask any questions, right? And we, and we actually do show people uh, the vision. We call it a, a VTO, so Vision Traction Organizer. So that's, that's right. kind of our, our one pager yeah. uh, that we, we really try and, you know, at least once a month, we really try and revisit um, and, and all members of the team revisit. So they know where we're going. And it says, this is what our three-year plan is. And this is our 10-year plan. And you know, the 10 year plan in a lot of these things is a it's big, funny. hairy, yeah. audacious goal, right? That's right. So it, yeah. it's, it, it's a bloody big goal. And, and, you know, like some people it's to, to build, you know, thousands and thousands of, of, of uh, kitchens, right. And, and, and install them in, you know, the best, um, you know, the best buildings that are moving into these mm -hmm. municipalities that they're targeting. Right. We, we've got clients who do that. And, other ones, it's we just want to build really quality kitchens where people can come together. Like all, all great visions, but at least having a vision that they can share with a potential employee yeah. is a really big deal, right? I, can, I, can I share one with you? Yeah, yeah. Go this for was it. the coolest one I'd ever heard. And this is a, a business owner that's pretty techie. Yeah. But when we did the EOS system on his, him and his wife own the business, uh, their big, hairy, audacious goal, their big 10 year plan was to build the first 3D printed kitchen. In oh, nice. their town. Now, isn't that amazing that they would go that far? Because we're a long way from it. But that's where they want to go. They want to yeah. build the first one. So imagine who they have to be to get there. Who does your company have to be? Who do you have to hire? What kind of systems do you need in place? What kind of projects do you need to take on? Who's going to be the client that wants the first 3D printed kitchen? I yeah. wouldn't want the first one. Don't try that out on me. Everything's hanging crooked and it's all, you know, the plastic melts above the stove. But I, Who's going to be that client? You have to think about those things. And I was very impressed when we did that, that very same strategic plan. And they came up with that crazy, beautiful, audacious goal. First yeah. 3D printed kitchen in that city. And they, they might have a, a laborer who, who's actually big into 3D printing, yeah. right? And, and 
they hear that and they perk up. You know, they might have been dragging their butt across the floor and being like, oh, I'm building kitchens. It's just a job. And, and you know, I'm, I'm looking at Tesla every day online or I've, I've seen what somebody did on this 3D and like, who knows? Like they could have this hidden passion and actually just putting that big, hairy, audacious goal is like you, you could have a champion in, inside or you can attract a champion because you've got these goals and you talk about them, right? Uh, they, they, they're no good in our head. Like I, I can get hit by a bus. You know, I can go out fishing and, you know, fall in and become a vegetable. But if, unless I put it out there, you know, speak that vision, put, put it out there, have other people embrace it. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not going to be able to build a team much less get to that destination. So. You actually had an analogy when we did our pre-interview that fishing means business because our title, just so everybody knows is how to build it. So they will join. And then we had this in brackets, fishing means business. What did you mean by that? How does that come to your mind when we're talking about bringing people and, and growing our company? Yeah, so to, to me, it takes a lot of resources and being resourceful to build a really good business, right? And, you know, anybody can, you know, go to Walmart and buy a fishing rod and, you know, tie something on and cast it into a lake and they might catch something, right? Uh, but in my experience and, and my lifetime, it, we've taken it to another level. I, I had the opportunity to commercial fish when I was you oh, know, wow. just, just in... You know, I, I, I think I was 16 and I had just gotten my license and I had the opportunity to drive down to the docks and meet somebody who was introduced to me. And I yeah. got a job on a commercial fishing boat, fished all the way up to the, you know, the southern tip of Alaska, the Queen Charlotte's down the West Coast. And it, it was a life changing experience. So, you know, I, I've had that opportunity to work in the business of fishing, but I have a passion for fishing and everything that it takes to actually be a successful fisherman. If you watch the world's most dangerous catch or wicked yeah, tuna yeah. or anything, all of those kind of things that take to actually get that fish in the boat and get it to market and actually get that sold is, is just fascinating to me. And, you know, I've, I've got a passion for it and I share that with people. Currently I share that with hundreds of people, but I, I'd, I'd really like to share that with thousands. Well, you're sh tens you're of sharing thousands. it with thousands right now. Yeah. There's a massive following in the show. So how does yeah. fishing mean business? What, what do we learn from that? Yeah, well, it's you, you've got to pay for good stuff. So we just did a hundred mile trip off the west coast of Vancouver Island, so just north of Seattle. Mm. And you know, we didn't go a hundred miles offshore, but we went probably you know sixteen miles offshore. Yeah, and we were not prepared. You know that mm. that that that's the story of this. And it, many times in business, I've not been prepared. It doesn't mean don't go. Oh, welcome but, to every day. Yeah, but know what you're what risking. You got? <laughs> what, know what you're risking in business, right? Like if you're going to invest in that 3D printer, if you're going to invest in in hiring a new manager, what are you risking, right? And in, in this case, we we were heading out, and I'd been on the boat before, and I knew the owner, so the captain, who, who's a friend, who's, who's a former business owner. Um, you know, I I knew he probably didn't have a hundred percent understanding of what we're getting into. So I invited another business owner who's a friend and a fisherman who's done lots of fishing. So I'm like, between the three of us, we should be able to do this. And, you know, we successfully went on the trip, but just like in a business, one of the guys didn't come along, right? Well, somebody you know, dropped out. Yeah. Yeah. At uh, uh, 0 048 uh, uh, on my, my, on my clock, we lost a, a guy because he had family commitments. Things weren't going sure. quite as well at home. Business owners know that, right. There, yeah. There's things yeah. that happen. And, you know, so we were down, down a really good man. Uh, but we still went on, on the voyage. And it's, it's the same with being an entrepreneur. Sometimes you're going to lose a team member, but if you've got a plan, you go for it. And it really is the business of fishing that helps get us there. We were taking apart his jet dash to reinstall his GPS because he had chosen a bad supplier to install that GPS because there wasn't enough, um, there wasn't enough electronic technicians for oh. a really good shop that I recommended him to. They couldn't get the job done, right? They they were like, yeah, we can book you in for, for September. And I'm like, no, 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 it's it's we're going. It's June and we're going. So he had gotten somebody to install it and they hadn't used the connectors at the back to really install it correctly. So I'm there with my Makita drill and you're, this is not who you want fixing your boat either, right? <laughs> but, but if you have team members that are willing to roll up their sleeves and say, yeah, we still want to go, but we need this level of things to get there. And, and these analogy in business and fishing, they're just every, 
every trip I'm out there, right? You got to have sharp hooks. You've got to invest in the right equipment. You need the right suppliers, right? And, and you need you need some experts, right? So you can pay for a guide. It is a yeah. great investment for any fisherman to pay for a guide. I just paid for a guide two weeks ago. Me yeah. and three buddies went on our annual trip, paid for a guide, couldn't be happier because if it wasn't going to be the guide showing us where to go, it was going to be me. And I did not, I'll scale. I didn't want to wear the stress. I know how to fish. I know how to hunt, but I, I, I'm not set up for it. And I'm not in the position where everybody around the table would have said, well, Dom says so let's do it. When the guide says so, we just go do it. There's nobody. And these are all powerful. These are other presidents and CEOs and business owners yeah. trying to move that many personalities in a direction without a third party. Forget it. We couldn't even figure out where to go for dinner as soon as the guide was gone. How are we yeah. going to catch fish? Right? Exactly. And, and he's a professional, right? right? Does it every day. And, and having these professionals, um, you know, be, being your coach, right? Hiring a coach is, is, is a is really great analogy analogy, you're going to catch a lot more. You're going to do a lot more business if you have the right coach, the right suppliers, right? So if, I mean, I, I know a lot of us can get machines running when we have to, whether it's a boat or, you know, yeah. a CNC router and stuff, but man, if you can get somebody to come in and program that well, if it's wired correctly, so you don't have voltage drops and stuff, if, if things are not resetting on you, um, if you have the right equipment, it makes such a big difference in your business and, and, and in fishing. And yeah, I, I want to share that passion that I've got, uh, you know, my father and, and my grandfather run, my grandfather used to run a guide outfitting business in Northern B British Columbia, right. Uh, on the, on the nation lakes. Right. So I, I'm not planning to go into business, be a fisherman, right. That that's kind of a last case scenario. If my wife doesn't make enough money and if something God forbids happens sure. to my business, I, I really enjoy being out there. I love being out there with my friends and family and stuff, but yeah. you know, it, it kind of runs in our blood to be entrepreneurs. A lot of your audience, it runs in their blood. So it just is. Yeah. Now you're a recruiter for the trades. Yeah. What do you, what you, so you see a lot of companies who are saying, Hey, Kale, we can't find people. And then you take a peek under the hood at their business and you see this. What is it that's holding them back? Is it because they're not running the right ads or is there something internally that's holding them back? So definitely, you know, it's that vision, um, you know, having everything working and stuff. But if, if you've got your house in order, mm. you know, there, there's probably a couple of things that really matter. Um, location, 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 and price. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hit me. <laughs> right. Because we can't uh, move our shops. So my shop is my shop. But what does that mean? Location, location, location. Yeah, de definitely where your shop is really matters, right? It does. So like, if, if you're... Uh, you know, we're recruiting for somebody down in, in, in Washington state, um, on kind of near, near the East, East coast or sorry, yeah. the West coast in, in Washington state and just how they advertise, you know, it's not so much their city, but what's the big city close to it that you can ah. may, maybe draw people to or from, because I can tell you, my, my wife is not moving to a small town anywhere in the world. Right. Like, right. like if, if it's 3,000, 2,000, 1,000 people, even though I, lo I love those towns, I, I think her limit's like maybe 100, maybe 200,000 people, right? Yeah. So it might be that your, your mill workshop services the big, the big city and you don't want to move it there, but you want to attract people out of there. So every job ad I, I get my team to put together has the commuting times to the bigger cities because it's oh. the, the number one thing people do is they search for, um, you know, Millwork Foreman. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Millwork Foreman, Tukwila. You know, and, you know, if, if we're going on the Gold Coast, they're, they're, they're going to choose a city that they think the job is it and the name, right? Right. So I, I put the, you know, the three cities, right? You know, whether it's, be, if it's in Red Deer, not a lot of people search for Red Deer, but a lot of people search for Calgary and Edmonton. Or Edmonton, And, right. and you just say 45 minutes, because you want it to be relevant too, or else Google will be like, oh, you're just word stuffing here. But you say 45 minute commute to... Calgary, 40 my, 45 minutes. And it might be that somebody's not planning to commute, but they might have family there. They're like, oh. And they want to know. It's, it's pretty close. Yeah. And there's so many municipalities in like one city, right? In yeah. my city, there's like 14 municipalities and nobody's going to be like, I'm going to search for Saanich, BC, right? Nobody's right. Gonna, hey, well, a few people might. Most people would be like Victoria, or BC. They're, well, they're going to spell it wrong anyways. Yeah, yeah. Right. So but if you, but also by that same token, if I say twin cities, do you know how many twin cities there are in the States? 
Yeah. Tri-cities. Tri-cities, twin cities. So you say we're in the twin cities areas. You're like, why am I getting all these all these applicants from Missouri. You're like, I don't, I don't want that or from somewhere else. And it's just the nickname they have for their local area. So yeah. I think you're, that's a really good point. Go look at your ads with a critical eye and, and ask yourself, who's going to answer this and why do they care? Yeah. And, and it, it might not be that you want them to live and commute there, but they might have family there. And that, that's really important because location, location, location. First, the first one's about family. Yeah. Will I be able to see my family? Um, and, and the other thing is, you know all the people in your neighborhood. You probably, like, even in a city of, like, one million, like, the people who can actually run a millwork shop, you know, like, there's, oh. there's pro- probably a dozen, a dozen people who can run it. If you're looking for a, a, a new foreman or a general manager, um, you know, it's, it, it's hard. So you need a relocation budget. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a yeah. new thing. So you need to say for the right person, how do you word that in the ad? How do we do it? Real, relocation will be offered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like, and everybody says, oh, for the right person. So my, my, my argument is do it for anybody who's any good. And you might only, you might only pay a few hundred dollars, right? Right. Yeah. You know, for, for, but for anybody who's any good, like, wouldn't you be willing to pay the bus fare for a laborer to come down for an interview the first time? If he's a good person who's going to grow with your company and be there for 16 years. That's a good bus. point. That's it's a good like point. 250, 350, whatever it is. But if, if you're getting an experienced, you know, CNC millwork guy who can also finish things, fix, you know, fix the errors and stuff, yeah. can, can look at these plans that have been given to him and like, can you send these back? This is an error. This is an error. This is what I think will work really well. Like that person is gold rather than, these cabinets won't go together. Why don't want they go together? It's like, oh, the plans were messed up, but we didn't catch that, right? Yeah, if you can so. find that guy, he's probably, or, or girl, they, they've, they've had what I think is at least a half a million dollar investment made in them by the past millwork owner. Right. But, uh, you know, it's, it's such a good point. I mean, you reminded me of something that we talk about on the show, which is as owners, we have a revenue responsibility per hour. Yeah. So if I have, just, just use simple math, if I have a million dollar business and I divide that by the assumption anyways, that I work 2000 hours a year, which I'm glad you weren't drinking your coffee at that point because none of us work 2000 hours a year, but you know, <laughs> I'm just doing the easy math. It's 500 bucks an hour. Yeah. Every hour that I fret and waste looking for this new person, I'm burning 500 bucks that I should be talking to another builder or another homeowner or another renovator or something about what we do, not finding another Benjamin. Yeah. And so to your point, should I be willing to spend 500 bucks on somebody's moving expenses if they're the right person? Yeah. All day long, because yeah. I, my time, and I have to drive the company, not, not worry about this. Yeah. And it seems expensive, right? It does. Yeah, but it's, it's a thing. one-time cost. It's a one-time yeah. cost, right? Like, and yeah, the guy might quit and you might be out 500 bucks. You might be out 5,000. Bigger companies could be out 50,000. Like that's how much they'll spend for a GM on the relocation because your realtor fees and all that, that's what the big, big companies are doing. Like yeah. even, even Ikea, like they're going to spend big money on relocating a manager. Right. So yeah. we, we don't have to worry so much about what the competition is doing, but let's just step up a little bit. Right. And offer relocation. And, you know, you don't have to offer the moon. A two year declining is, is kind of the format. Um, and you know, a two year payback, what? right? So say, say you do a thousand bucks, helping somebody relocate. You're like, once you arrive on your first day, you know, I'll, I'll give you a thousand bucks. Cause I know you're, you're, you're spending at least that much in gas and, right. and you know, whatever it is, you know, they come, you know, write the check, they work the day, you know, if they don't work the day, maybe cancel the check, do whatever you need to do. But a 12 month or a 12 or 24 month payback is, you know, if you stayed six months or if you stayed one year out of the two year, I'm asking for 500 back. So it gives them, Oh, I'm I'm committing to two years with you. So a prorated, right. And that's an easy, easy agreement to write up. It might not be enforceable, but it's like, Oh, I'm, I'm not coming there just for a stake, right? Like I'm not coming there for a camp job to get you through this project. I'm coming here for the long term. So at least have them thinking. And I, I mean, I signed one of those, you know, 20 years ago when I was just coming out of university and I, I, 
I was moving like 50 kilometers, right? And oh, not that far. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't. I was moving from Vancouver to, to Squamish, right? So, for, so I, a big mill. Yeah. I think that the one of the takeaways I'm taking from you, or maybe it's just reinforcing, is it's time to open our minds up. Because doing the same thing again and again, like I'll run another ad on Indeed, it's all we can do. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, this show is about finding a way. Yeah. And Kale, you're giving us a way. So anybody listening who's like, oh, this is BS. I'm not doing it. Well, I'm sorry. You're right. It's a crazy idea. Why don't you try it? What happens yeah. if it works? If it works and you get a new Benchman, if it works and you get a new Foreman, if it works and you get a, a, a great installer, it just worked. Yeah. And I mean, you, you got to think about how big our countries are. If you're in Australia, New Zealand, like we're not in Switzerland where it's a really small, you know, we might have some listeners who are in Switzerland, but it's a, it's a really small country. Right. And, right. and there's feeder countries right around. But um, if, if you're smack dab in the middle of the United States or even in the middle of California, that's a big area to move from. So just that hurdle for a candidate uh, and less than 1% usually move. Right. But that right. hurdle of, oh, there's going to be some relocation assistance. They, they actually want me, right? When you're looking at ads, there's all these employers and like, I don't want anybody outside of the LA area because the cost of living is too expensive. So don't, don't, don't send me any as a recruiter. And I'm like, man, like you're, you're giving me a headache here, customer, because like you're cutting out 99% of the people in the United States. Uh, LA is a big city, right? So we, we can headhunt people in, in LA, but but be open to the possibility. Be open. To I, the possibility. I would rather be in the and position where I get to say no than for begging for somebody to say yes to. Is that and, what you're saying? Yeah, and and attract people, right? Like, because yeah. like I, I see so many job ads where it's like, you know, I've got a millwork job. Okay, I I know I know like ten guys who need mill workers. So like, why do I need to apply to this ad? But if there's some benefits that are listed, right? Uh, that's super important, like beyond that, right? So what, what are we giving back? And it might be part of that going back to the values and vision, or it might be, yeah, I've got a benefits plan, right? So actually list it right within the ad and you don't need to write huge ads, but at least here's something that you get. Lately, you know, that's a good point. So lately, uh, you know, cause I work with lots of clients one-on-one -on -one and we're running ads on Indeed or on Facebook and we've got these big, beautiful ads with our culture and our vision and all that. And I've said, Hey, why don't we go try the other way? Go back to the three line ad wanted cabinet maker, because we, ha we have to try Like, yeah, I can't sit up myself. I can't be in love with my own ideas. If my ad, if the Dominic ad isn't working, it's not working. It, the ad's not working. So change it. And it's the same and, for any of us out there. Just change, and, get rid of your ego, change the thing. Definitely short communication is a good style, but what are you putting in that ad? Are you putting an email me your resume or are you saying text me? And I yeah. know people don't want their, their <laughs> phones blown up. You can get a, a text to email number where your admin yeah. handles it, right? For like 50 cents or a dollar 50. You right? can get so, a burner phone for, for the cost of it. Yeah. <laughs> burner like, phone. Like what, what business are you in here? <laughs> but you can. There's yeah. way, don't, I guess the point here is don't yeah. say I can't ask how can I? Yeah. How, how can I? Because kids these days and even you know my 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 stepmom my dad like they they're used to receiving texts and sending texts how many are sending emails right like you got to think if if it's like a general manager and you're trying to attract them he'll probably have a resume he'll probably have you know his email but you know a guy who's just put in 10 hours finishing a project getting getting yelled at, you know, and having to deal with a you know a poor laborer and stuff and he's thinking man I want to switch jobs and it, he flips open his phone and he's browsing through Facebook mm. and he sees your ad and it's like, send, send me a resume. Only those who are qualified will be contacted. Or it's, it's somebody like, you know, hiring millworks, millwork people, you know, paying, paying 30 bucks an hour and we've got benefits and great modern, well-heated shop text, text, you know, seven, 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 eight, seven, six, the guy's yeah, gonna text. Tell, text tell us right your there. real number, Kale. Tell us your real phone number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You text right now, right? <laughs> you know that. So, so definitely, sh I, I love the idea of change it up. Yeah, right? Ch change it up, and don't fall in love with your own ideas. By the way, I had a very serious conversation with one of my clients the other day. So let's say three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. I said everything's going to come on the table. We can't find people, 
And so they came up with it. Well, we could run a different ad. We could do this. We could do that. And I said, what if we move the shop? And they almost spit out their coffee. Yeah. But I had to put that on the table because as ridiculous as it sounds, they're not on a bus line. They're not on transit. They're in a weird area. Great real estate prices. They have a very low lease rate. I want them to buy a building of their own, but that's another conversation. But that has to be on the table. It's hard to get to their shop. You have yeah. to go there to get there, if that makes sense. You don't just yeah. happen to drive by. And so even the ads, you know, where we put a sign on the street up front that says now hiring with a big arrow. Well, who goes by it if you're on a road that's shared with, you know, two cows and a horse? Like nobody's going through there. Yeah. No, and and I mean, there are companies that they're going to fly somebody in from other parts of the world, right? Things are opening up again. You know, my, my friends are traveling. And if you can get a mill worker from Ireland or the UK. Oh, wonderful. Or, yeah. Or, or, or anywhere, um, you, you do it, right? Like we, we've got eight guys who, you know, have decided, you know, they're 10, 15 year guys with great experience and they're spending two weeks in quarantine. But the ROI for them is, is huge, right? And the employer is having to pay for those hotel rooms for two weeks, but like they're getting a new opportunity in a new country. And, you know, they come with so much experience, you know, like 15 years of experience. Yeah. And like I said, to cha- train a five-year guy, it's going to cost you half a million because he's going to take away time from your, your really yeah. good lead people. And you might send them to school. You might buy them safety equipment and stuff where, yeah, I mean, really have to be open to the big ideas like moving your shop, hiring somebody from another part of the country or another country. Why not? My, Why not? My, hey, my parents were immigrants. My yeah. dad made, my dad was just talking to me last night uh, about this. He made a dollar an hour when he first came over. And he's a welder fabricator or, you know, he was the old Italian unlicensed millwright, basically. Just yeah. Give him any project and he can make the thing, but he has no tickets to speak of, right? Yeah. Uh, he's making a buck an hour Yeah. when he first came over. But how many of us were immigrants? How many of our families came over? So to say right now, oh, I don't, I don't want, you know, people who are new to the country in my shop. It's a little short-sighted, my friend, because we were all new to the country at one point. Yeah. And, and like, you, you never know. I was, I was interviewing this woman for my company and she, she was a sales manager at at a furniture store and and I'm looking at her for a a, a manager role. And she's like, I had somebody working under me who did 2 million in sales last year. She was the manager. She did a million in sales herself. And she was mentoring somebody who did 2 million in sales. Perfect. And, and she's a recent immigrant. But, but she moved to Victoria because her son has joined the Navy. Like that, that's our immigrants. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're going off in the ships. Like I, I love going offshore, but I am not going to the Middle East. I, I'm not going, you know, in a submarine. I, I, I'm not going in a submarine. You yeah. know, I know, I know our, our military does great exercises with the U S and Australia. And, you know, there's going to be ports of call, but like that, that takes a special individual and, you know, immigrants, you know, they sign up for the military and, and that that's great. You know, that, that second generation is amazing. And so we got to look at somebody, even if they only have 10 years of experience in, in our country mm-hmm. or even, even no experience, it's like, pick up the phone and call and, you know, maybe five times out of 10, they don't have any relevant experience. They're not going to be able to communicate, but those other five times, they like, can. That could be a loyal employee who would be there, be with you for five, 10, 15 years, right? So yeah, being open. Kale, you've got so much knowledge. We haven't even touched on it because I know in our pre-interview, we touched on so many more things. So yeah, uh, if somebody wants to understand how recruiting works in the trades business, do, can how do we find you in this big wide world? Yeah, so definitely Red Seal Recruiting is, is, is kind of our sphere. We're always trying to draw in both employers and, and good candidates, right? So we've I believe we've got kind of a millwork carpentry section, uh, mm. which is, is designed to attract candidates, right? So um, our job board is, is really an attraction thing. And, and a highlight that I think people should think about for their own website is, is putting their jobs on their website first and, and changing them out on a regular fee, uh, basis, because that's how Indeed came out of nowhere in the last kind of 10 years. It used to be Monster and Career Builder. Right. Now, they're, now they're gone is because they posted up all these job ads for free. So, you know, I hate to mention the competition indeed, but you know, we've got a good job board. So employers and candidates can come to it as well. And I recommend that people build that themselves. So redsealrecruiting.com, 
come check it out. We've got some blogs that, you know, talk about employment shortages and, and highlight things like what you should do in job ads and stuff like that. So we're always trying to share knowledge. We've got a good team. It's, it's one of our values is sharing mm-hmm. knowledge because, you know, if, if somebody's struggling and they, they, they call us up and, you know, I know they don't have the budget, you know, they're only able to pay 22 bucks an hour because they're, you know, their margins are, are super tight. I'll say this is what other people are paying. You know, I'll share information yeah. with them and and try and help them. You know, att- attract people, right? Because it's or or I'll say, you know, maybe you should be hunting down in this demographic. Um, and you know, we we even have a salary survey. We, I don't believe we have one for mill mill workers right now, but we we might once in a while. You'll see that if you actually go on the Indeed job ads and and you see companies that are only offering like fifteen bucks an hour. Yeah. In so, some part of the country for mill workers, like hmm maybe I should recruit in that area. Right. So kind of flip the switch and be like, okay, we pay more. If, if, if I see in Louisiana, they're only paying 20 bucks an hour and we pay 30 bucks an hour in, you know, wherever it is in New York, uh, I'm going to target candidates in that area and start reaching out to them. Right. So that, that's one of the things we do. And, and we've got lots of stuff on our website that kind of encourages employers to do that themselves because you know, we're not a magic, magic panacea, but if we can share information, people will come back to us, hopefully for that GM role or, you know, that critical role that they want us to fill for them. Okay. I love it. Now you said you're, you're here to share information. Yeah. How deep do I fish a cut plug at what speed to get coho in September? <laughs> come on, come on. Coho, coho should never be fished on a cut plug. Okay. Right? So, see, I just made up words. I made, I know this is why I need a guide, Kale. Um, <laughs> But you do fish in one of the most beautiful areas of the world. It's on a lot of people's bucket lists. What are the five types of salmon? It's five types that we could fish here, right? Yeah, yeah. So definitely Chinook or King salmon or spring salmon, all the same species, but yeah. you know, the, the U.S. Different has words. a different name for it. Uh, we have coho. Um, we have chum salmon and pink salmon as well. And, yeah, and pink year this year. Pink year this year. And, and I'm a big fan of halibut um, because of some of the fishing restrictions, uh, you know, Salmon fishing isn't quite as, as plentiful. I just had a, a nice salmon meal last night, but I, I'm a big fan of halibut as well. And yeah, just, just great eating fish. And, and that's the, you know, the cool waters off the West Coast coming down from Alaska. Yeah, um, yeah it's just a beautiful spot. And I totally recommend people come up here, reach out to me on, you know. That's what I was going to say. Media. If you want to know about yeah. fishing, and sockeye, I think, is the fifth. But oh, if, yeah, uh, sockeye, yeah. That's my favorite. Sockeye is the nice red, deep one. That's yeah. A, so if, if people are thinking about, um, you know, a, a sushi, sushi yeah. or, or salmon locks, if, if you ever in a, like a top end restaurant, that, that nice, I don't want to say blood red, but that just red, rich yeah, meat. Beautiful. With, oh. Yeah. So, so yeah. good. And, and, and if you can have smoked salmon of that, that nature. Yeah. It's the best. So you can contact Kale for, if you have a fishing dream, I'm sure he could point you to some of his buddies who are still guiding stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. I, I just had a, a fellow I, I, I know really well. He said, like, Kale, I'll pay you to guide me this. And I'm like, I know I've got two young children. They're my priority this summer. Um, I, I'll take, I almost take anybody out for one day, right? If the weather lines up and things line yeah. up and, and they like kids. Cause you know, my wife is like, you're taking the kids. Yeah. And, and that, <laughs> it's the weekend. It's your turn now. It's, it's the weekend, right? As entrepreneurs, our, our days are full and stuff, but if we can, we can make sure we're contributing 100% on the weekends, even while we're fishing them, that yeah. we might get a, a haul pass. Love it. All right, Kale, thank you very much for being on the show. It's been funny as well as informative. I like that. And we talked about fishing, which I really love. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks so much. And uh, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of, of the show and, and what, what you guys are doing, right? So keep up the good work. Thanks, Kale. We'll talk to you soon.